Well, hello, America. Um, we are facing tough economic times. Um, and, uh, you know, as much as you have to go out and vote, you have to go out and vote. Um, and you have to find somebody, somebody, anybody that can um, help rein in this monstrosity that we are creating in Washington. Things are uh, upside down. Mortgages are underwater, foreclosures, um, banks are going under. And while you have to vote, I, 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 I hope I'm wrong, but I don't believe I am. Um, things are going to speed up after the election. Economically, things are going to get worse before they get better. They have to. The body is sick. It, 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 we, we are riddled with corruption and greed. Um, uh, we, we haven't solved any of the problems. We haven't even talked about the problems that got us here. And the government is, um, the government is giving us poison in this arm and saying, I'm just giving you some medicine over here. We're now going to punish the rich with taxes. And when I say rich, I mean people that make $250,000 a year. That may be a lot more than what you make. And it may seem like that's an awful lot of money, but the people who are making $250,000 a year most likely started out making as much or less than you are now. And they've done some things that have put them in that situation. And $250,000 is a lot of money unless you're running a small business. Out of that $250,000 comes maybe your salary. And they're being demonized in the press. Well, the government doesn't understand that rich people are not out buying yachts. Okay, George Soros probably is. But he's a spooky dude. They're not off shopping and redecorating their mansions because most of the quote-unquote rich are small business owners, they're entrepreneurs, they are the backbone of our economy and members of your community. These are the people that have an idea, most likely an idea very similar to the one that you have. Almost every job, 80% of all jobs in America, when America is suffering, 80% of all new jobs come from small business owners. And they're having a tough time. I have a room full of them tonight. I want to talk to them a little bit. In fact, let me, let me ask you guys a question. How many are afraid of this current environment that you don't know that you can actually continue to keep your doors open if it continues to spiral down? Look at that. Let's, let's call a spade a spade or a weasel a weasel. The politicians are going to let those tax, um, uh, Bush tax cuts expire. That's why they didn't pass anything, because they don't have to. They'll just expire, and they'll go, what? I didn't vote for that. That's why they just expire. That was the plan in the beginning. You don't have to vote on those going up, because this is the largest tax increase in American history, coming right after the first of the year. Plus, oh, we got even more. We've got uh, Obamacare right around the corner. The looming tax hike will make it harder for small businesses to keep their doors open. These are the people that create jobs. But not only that, they represent the spirit of America. What, what used to be the American dream. What politicians don't understand is that starting a small business is not about money. It's not about being rich. Who here thinks if you start with the idea of being rich, you're most likely going to fail. Absolutely. It's not about money. The money, in the end, represents freedom. But not the kind of freedom where you're like, yes, love, hey, let's go to the beat. Who travels around like Thurston Howell with a trunk full of money? Nobody. George Soros. <laughs> Other than him. It's not that kind of freedom. It's the freedom to call your own shots, to do your own thing. And often the freedom to fail, which stinks. But you know what? It's an honor. It's a privilege to be allowed to fail. Every day we're learning more and more. Nobody's going to let you fail. Well, how do you learn? How do you learn to pick yourself up and try again? No one says, I just hate working. I'm going to start a small business. Nobody says that. 
The work is hard. And quite honestly, as a small business owner myself, I have to tell you something. First, success isn't guaranteed. And be careful what you wish for. I have 40, about 46 employees just in New York right now. This, this city, you think the country's bad. You live in Iowa. Oh, sure. <sighs> Government's off track. Sure, yeah. Try in New York City, in New York State, in the new United States of America. It's like three strikes and you're out. It's not only hard work, but I tell you, how many here who have sleepless nights thinking about just their employees and how am I going to keep so-and-so with health insurance because they've got problems and I don't want them in the government system? How many people have thought, if this thing falls apart, how, am I, how do I do this to my employees? How do I not pay them? How do I fire them? How many? Most people that are successful don't make it to Bill Gates level. Otherwise, Bill Gates wouldn't be such an anonymous. Bill Gates wouldn't walk around and you go, is that Bill Gates? There'd be a lot of them. Some do make it big. But then what do they do? Usually, they start another business or they expand or they move on to the next great idea. And the money gets reinvested in people and ideas. Tonight, we'll meet with small business owners who pay everybody else before they get paid. You see, to start a business or to launch a new product, you need to have money. You need to have capital. And in the end, if you succeed, you're the one who took all the risk. You're the one who had the idea. You took all the risk. You were the ones that were up late worrying about it. You were the one pacing the floor. Look, man, there are lots of times that I wish, not seriously, because I enjoy... I enjoy following my heart and my dreams. But there are times that I'm like, you know what? I just wish I could just close the door and go, I don't really care. Not my deal. Business owners don't do that. So if I've done all of that work, and all these people have, shouldn't it be up to them how to reinvest in their business? Or give to a charity? Or to start another business? Shouldn't they have the right to be able to have their money? They've done it. They've been successful. Wouldn't we count on the successful people to do it again? Should it be up to you? Should it be up to, should it be up to Washington? If they can keep their money? I mean, after all, there comes a point where you can make too much. Really? Have you, have you called George Soros? We're putting ourselves in a place where we are not competitive anymore. Why? There's too many restrictions. Do you know, I saw a study that said that Microsoft would not be able to be done today. A guy in his garage could not come up with an idea and start Microsoft. What have we turned into? The U.S. was a place where you, where you had the freedom to think and to do the unthinkable. The, do you know the story of FedEx? FedEx went to every single banker around. Nobody needs their documents overnight. Ha, 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 that's ridiculous. That's what they said. Nobody would give them a loan. Nobody needs it that fast. Really? It was somebody thinking the unthinkable. It's people that look like they're crazy at the beginning. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make a vacuum tube with a couple of wires in it and plug it in and it'll give us light <laughs> okay they're doing things that nobody else has tried or they're doing them in a different way that nobody else has thought of you can't try crazy stuff anymore because you can't fail you can't take the risk oh no 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 that might be damaging to the little fluffy white-eyed owl this used to be a country where everybody came where everybody dreamt they were like, if I could just get to America, I could be free enough to do it. The question is, is it today still that country? And will it be tomorrow? Are we going in the direction that still allows people to go, man, if I could just be free to try it? Are we moving in that direction or are we moving away from it? That's a question we should ask ourselves every day. 
We should encourage legal immigration. I, you know, I'm telling you, somebody needs to make a stand for a new uh, Ellis Island. I think we should have maybe three or four of them all on the borders. We should have Ellis Island back. A place where you come in. Hi, what's your name? What do you got? What kind of skill? Why are you here? All right. You have any diseases or anything like <coughs> that maybe we shouldn't be spreading around? Good. We have money. Can you take care of yourself? Because we don't want all these people taking care of you. Can you, can you take care of yourself? All right. You don't have any money. Do uh, you have skill? What can you do? Can you make us better? Do you even understand what this country is? Can you speak the language? What kind of prison do you live in when you can't speak the language? We need to find the best and the brightest and encourage them to stay. Right now, we can't even get at Microsoft. We cannot get the best to stay here. They go away. They begged under George Bush. Microsoft begged under Bush, begged under Obama. Can you please change this? We need the best and the brightest. They should want to stay here. Now there's like, no. Nah. Why? Because I don't know if you've seen the debt, but if we're going to pay for that, we need the next, oh, about thousand big things. But the ability to come up with the next big thing, no, it's not even that. The ability to live your dreams, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life. Nobody's going to just take me off the streets and snatch me off the streets and throw me in jail. Nobody can just kill me. Liberty. I I'm free to move around. I'm free to do the things. How am I free? I'm free because my, my liberty, I'm free to pursue my happiness. Well, to pursue my happiness, I have to know my stuff is protected. I have to be able to leave my farm. I need to have to leave my family. I can't be watching my stuff and do my job. I need a government that will just do enough to make sure nobody's stealing my stuff, but the government is now stealing my stuff. Hollywood, politicians, everybody. They have made the dream into something other than, I just want a shot. They've made it into something that it's not. They made it into a great big house. Granite countertops, flat screens in every room, just like I've seen in, on the Jersey Shore. That's great. Housewives of Jersey, woo! If I could live that dream, that dream's a nightmare. You can get a car that you can't afford. Have you, and you may be in this situation now, I remember having, because it's the only car I could afford, was a 1971 Thunderbird. It drank gasoline. I mean, it, I, it may have gotten four miles to the gallon. And I, I was making nothing. And I remember counting the change out. I'd like $2.93 of gas, please. That's tough. That is tough. It's not about cheap gas, big cars, big houses. It's about pursuing your dream, not a guaranteed outcome. I'm living the American dream, not because I have a nice house or a nice car. My dream was always just to do radio. I wanted to work at Rockefeller Plaza. I wanted to work in Radio City. When I first moved to New York City um, this time around, I, um, I, bought, I, I built my studios, or I was about to build my studios in Radio City. And then uh, somebody said, yeah, we can make that happen for you. <coughs> oh, yeah. I let 7,000 square feet in Rockefeller Plaza sit empty for a year because I wouldn't pay a bribe. Not going to sully myself. You can't build a good business on bad foundations. Ever since I was a kid, I wanted to work in radio. I didn't really want to do television. Um, I wanted to be on stage. I wanted to entertain I'm doing all, I'm living my dream.